Right, I'm on it, I'm mowing. And uh, this is a, a video I just thought I'd show you what happens when you leave grass too long and you don't mow it in time. Uh, as you know, I kind of like to show you most things on the farm, everything that goes right and also the things that don't go right. I'm just undoing the, doing the gate now. So, you might have realised the weather's been pretty rubbish. We've had a pretty unsettled August. Um, so I, I got most of our baling done and our hay made, but this one field just got left. We just didn't have the time to, uh, you know, when I was hay making, I couldn't be doing everything. This got left, it's gone past its best. I'm gonna show you a hell of a lot of docks. We're gonna have to get this sprayed next year. Let me just pan round, look. Flipping it, that's not a good field. Look at the docks in that. Look at that. Docks, 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 docks. Let's have a, look, a closer look. So, the, the grass, it's never come back that thick. We didn't put any fertilizer on here for second cut because we had enough grass, but it's all gone laid down. The docks have come up in it. That's not good, but I knew, I knew it needed uh, spraying uh, for docks a while back but we just never we've just never done it because normally we it's grazed off or eaten off before they get to seed stage but the amount of seed that's in that now that's going to spread next when i especially when i mow it so next spring we're going to have a dock problem here big time uh, the grass has gone stale it's stale but i mean the only thing is i can get away with this because this isn't first cut silage for cows this is for round bales we'll be feeding this to dry cows and heifers so and, it, and majority of the bales we've cut second cut and everything have been good quality this is just filler really um but i, I just thought i'd show you this this is interesting you probably you, well you will have never seen me have a field like this before on the farm you will never see me let a field get like this before this is just because of the weather i would have mown this weeks ago if i'd had a chance Incidentally, you're seeing this video late. I've, um, well, I'm, I've been on holiday, when you, but I haven't been yet. Okay, so I confess, right, so while I've been on holiday, I've been uploading videos on YouTube because let's face it, I don't want to advertise to the world when I'm on holiday. So it's now, what is the date today? Let's have a look. Uh, I never know what day of the week. It's the 11th of August today. You're seeing this quite late, a bit later than that. You can tell me the date. I think I'm going to set this to upload on uh, a Saturday after I've just come back from holiday. Obviously, I can't film any videos while I'm on holiday, so I'm uploading this now for you to see when I get back to save me having to do it one straight away. So it's a bit of a cheat, but there you go. So hopefully I've had some good weather in Devon. The only other thing is I'm going to be in trouble with my wife. Go on, on TripAdvisor and put, look up Valley of the Rocks Hotel, North Devon. I can't remember. Limpton, is it? Jesus. It's got some awful reviews. One of them says it's a bit like a squat. I booked this hotel for a few nights and looks like, the exit. looks like we're staying in basically hotel hole, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm hoping I'm still married by the time you watch this video because it's a bit of a dad cock up. But hey ho, anyway, I don't really care because do you know what? To actually have a few days off, this will be our first holiday in two years. Much like everyone else in the country, I guess, really. Let's face it, not many people have been anywhere. But do you know what? It will. The only time I get to relax is if I do get off the farm because even if I have a day off on the farm, it's not a holiday, it's not a day off because reality is you're always thinking of something even that, do you know what, even when I was on holiday, let me just turn this off, even when I was on holiday a couple of years ago, when I was 50, we went to a nice place in South Devon, and uh, even when I was there, someone texted me and said, oh, we got a problem with fly strike on, on the heifers, because uh, they had eye infections, so even when I was on my holiday, I was managing that, I had to tell my brother about it and get arranged for the cattle to be brought up, you, you know, if you're a farmer, you just never turn off, I, well, I don't. And, and I think anyone, any of you out there who've got livestock and, and farms and stuff will know 
you just never turn off. Right, let me just show you something here. I've got the mower here. We've had a repair job done on it. Look at this, this is a brilliant job. So this, this was cracking around here. It had been patched once before and really a bit of a design fault because the, that mower there joins, that joins on there. This takes all the strain when, if you, you know, the mower is pushing it that way, naturally trying to go that way. This is taking all the strain. So the chap who came in said, I'm gonna put a bracket there. I couldn't do this myself. I couldn't rely on my welding being good enough. So he put that bracket in there and we'll beef that up there. But that's the main thing. That is now taking the strain. They should have put that in there when it was new. Right, so let me just do this. Oh, I think I haven't dropped that down enough. Oh. oh, I need a bit of grease on there. There we go, got it. I didn't bring my tripod, so we're gonna get some, whoa! Oh, bugger, I've just dropped the clip, there it is. Oh, I thought I'd lost it for a moment. Excuse my language there. Let me just put that down. All right. Oh. I've just got to push. I've got the weight of the mower. Because I've not dropped it down enough, I've got the weight of the mower on there. Right. Almost and upwards. I expect I'll have to adjust the top link at some point. I don't think I've got that quite right. I might drop that down now and have a look at that. So, no outside tripod shots today. We got to stop for Popmaster as well. That must be coming up soon. Uh, I must have missed Bruce. Oh, no. Ken Bruce, that is. All right. Okay, let me just check this and then we'll be back in a minute. Right. Just putting the PTO on. This poor old mower is getting on a bit now. Right. Let's have a go. That's all right. That's right. All right, we're not in a race. Oh. Put the revs up enough. Do you know what? It seems fast. I'm doing 6.2 miles an hour. Let's have a look. I've actually just dropped it back down. 4.2. Let's go up a little bit. 4.7. Up a bit more. 5.86. That is fast enough on this tractor. Oh, sorry. Six mile an hour is fast enough on this tractor. I don't like to go too fast. But we're looking at this crop here. You can see, you can see how brown it is. Brown, brown, brown. I'll just, uh, I'll see if I can find a video clip of me mowing it back in May for first cut. Cause that was when it was last May, last mow. It's a hell of a gap between now and last May. It really should have been mown earlier. All right, I'll just show you this. So this is last May, same field. last May, um, not been mown since, would have ideally, would have ideally been mown um, in uh, July, early July really, and it just didn't get happen, as I've explained before. So the problem is we've got stale grass here. Um, and also, my biggest concern now is I'm not going to get a lot of regrowth. See, once it goes brown like that, it doesn't grow. It's, it's, it's stalled its growth. And it's only when you mow it, it suddenly comes back to life. And the problem is now, I'm getting late. Oh my God. Look, can you see that? I wonder if they'll 
leg here. Look at that! And he's gone. Wow! <laughs> Do you know what? I love it! I love it! I lo absolutely love it when I see stuff like that. Um, just right, hang on, let me just check. I've got missing Popmaster. Oh my goodness, it's Popmaster. Right, we'll be back for 3 and 10. Right, I've just, uh, yeah, I've just been listening to a little bit of Popmaster. The other guy's going to be on in a minute. They've got a record break. We're going to be doing three and ten in a second. I just thought I'd get back to where I was talking before. I've gone round with field once. I was just saying, uh, the grass is stale here. But the other thing I've got to consider is that it's late mowing, so it's going to take a long time to green up, and we're losing the season now because we're getting into the end of August. We're not going to have a lot of grass growth, and the thing is, I rotate these fields for our heifers, so the heifers are over there at the moment, we might have a quick look at those later if I've got time. Um, ideally, this would be mown a couple of weeks ago, in July, and the heifers would be coming back in here now to do a bit of grazing, but there's no chance of that. You know, I'm going to be late on that greening up, so we're going to we're going to be a whole kind of host of issues. We're going to have bale quality that's not great. We're going to lose some of the grazing because it won't have greened up in time. Uh, but there you go. Anyway, we're waiting for Potmaster three and ten. Going to join me on that, people. We love three and ten. I might even rename it Porkmaster because look, for my snacks on the uh, pork scratchings. I've got some port scratching to keep me going this morning. Thank you for Martin who sent me a load of them back in uh, when it was the World Cup. And I'm slowly in my way through. Although I must admit, you could have too much of a good thing. <coughs> anyway, I'm the only one who likes port scratches in our family. Everyone else has turned their nose up at them. But uh, um, nothing wrong with a porky scratching, is there? Right, let's have a look. We'll keep going and then we'll stop for Popmaster. Jenny downstairs, uh, our incredible baby boy Barney, who's just woken up. Uh, he's far too young to listen to this, but he might listen again on BBC Family. Right. Uh, We're about to do 3 in 10 on Popmaster. Or Porkmaster! He's, he's prattling on about his friends. I'm just going to get one of these bad boys out. Look at that beauty. Whoa. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much for being here. Good luck, Mark. Cheers. Good luck, Mark. Good luck, everyone on the Funk Farm. Dickens, that was in mm. Oxfordshire. Mm. So, mm. Mark Wilbraham mm. in Lancashire. Mark, you are through to three and ten. Three and ten. Come, Come on, people. Let's. Ten seconds, three answers. Today, please, the titles of three UK single chart mm. hits. Four. Three in ten. Belinda Carlisle. Heaven is a place uh, on, on earth. Yes. Uh, the sand yes. And oh, she ain't got many. Oh, I got no idea. Heaven is a place on earth. Oh, He's going to reel them off now. That's a shame. You were so yeah. fast there with the first two. What we got? A place on earth, circle of the sand. Others are into deep. Leave a light on. We want the same thing. Twenty-three in total there. Blimey, that's twenty-three hits. Pleasure. I thought you had. A I didn't know Blinda got out of twenty-three hits. Wow, I could only name one. Right. So I'm on the, um, look at these beauties, look at these, look at that, I'm on me pork scratching, pork master, they're incredibly bad for you but they are lovely, 
in small quantities. Right, I haven't really achieved a lot yet. I better get on with this. We'll have a look when I've done a bit more, all right? Cheers. Crack on! Come on, everyone. Crack on. nearly finished doing around the headlands um, I've got to go around a couple more times I think and then I'll be going up and down God, God I wish I brought a drink with me those, those uh, poor scratches are a bit salty anyway we're just about to come up by a little dead elm tree and there's a buzzard sat on it there's always a buzzard when you're mowing they're always looking out for the um, the mice so oh look he's just flying off now look can you see that where's he gone He's in the tree. I'll see if I can get a bit more better footage of him when we go by. And they always wait around. They're, they're very clever. They wait because they know that once you expose the underside of the grass, there'll probably be some field mice in there. So I, I'm just flying across now. Um, so, so far this morning, I've seen some deer. <coughs> I've seen a uh, pheasant, one, one cock pheasant, and one uh, buzzard. All just stood around, sat around in the tractor. They, they're quite used to the tractor, so they don't have an issue with me being around on it. Right. Oh, I wish I bought a drink. Uh, I've got a long way to go yet. I'll end up drinking out of the cattle crop at this rate. Right, here we go. Mowing, mowing. We need to do a song, don't we? I know you love my singing, everyone. Mowing, one man went to mow, went to mow a meadow. One man and his dog went to mow a meadow. I don't know the rest, is it? Two men went to mow, went to mow a meadow. One man, no, I don't know, two men and his dog and a frog went to mow a meadow. Three men went to mow, went to mow a meadow. Three men and a dog and a frog and a log went to mow a meadow. Should we do another one? Yeah. <laughs> Four men went to mow, went to mow a meadow. Four men and his dog and a frog and a log and a. Um, uh, come on, what, what rhymes with bog, log, and dog or something? Um, um, oh dear, God Almighty. Um, uh, Adam Arsbar went to mow a meadow. Right, <laughs> quit. Right, crack on. Keep mowing. Keep my singing going. That made the grass die, won't it? But Buzzard's back. He's shy, look. He's gone again. He's off. Where is he? He's gone across there. Up in the tree, look. Where is it? There he is. Could be a she, might not be a he. It's surprising, he's actually quite shy this time. Normally, <clears throat> normally I see him, they stand where I they just sit, sit and watch and, and I drive by, but this one. When I get near it, it flies off to the oak tree up there. So, uh, yeah, maybe there's more cover up there, I suppose. If he is worried about predators and he's like having a gun or something like that, it's less likely to be spotted in the tree. Right, anyway, uh, we might see it later. He's being chased by a crow at the moment. There we go. Right, well, I've been going up and down this strip now quite a bit. You can see there where I've known. Just dropped the camera just now and it all went blurry. I thought I'd broken it, but we're back on it. Uh, Mr. Buzzer's been around, he's actually caught a mouse. I've seen him up in the tree pecking away at it. Uh, so this is going okay. The weather forecast is still a bit iffy. 
you shut that door, it won't be quite so loud. Uh, oh, Mr. Buzzer's just got another mouse. I've just seen him over there. He's gone up in the oak tree, but I won't be able to see him. Right. I'm going to carry on with this. I'm only going to film now when we stop, maybe, or near the end. I got, um, you can see here, look. I'm doing this strip here, done that bit there. I, um, it's going down all right. I, ne I never trust myself on this thing, you say everything's going all right, because you only need a belt to come off on the mower or something, and then suddenly, what goes is a, a lovely afternoon or morning mowing <coughs> turns into some sort of disaster. So, at least the welding's good on that mower now. Going down there. We'll see how we go. Crack on, crack on everyone. Let's catch up at the end. Look, I'll just show you me and my mower. finish let's go and have a look what we've got oh oh my back's flipping playing up oh you know what I like with my back every now and then I get a twinge I've got a flipping twinge now right let's have a look so we've got mown grass and we've got what's not mown look at it horrible stuff really you get a better idea when it's mown let's get down on it so what we've got here, we've got the Italian ryegrass and you can see it's gone completely to seed and that is pretty dried out, stalky stuff. Nutritional value, not good. Docks in it, gonna have a problem with seed spreading from that. Hopefully if it goes in the muck, I can pile the muck up and it might kill the seeds. You can get across here, you can see we've got buttercup coming through. There's some clover over there but look you can see the stalkiness on it so not going to be great quality bales not great so I mean the interesting thing is you see this is where you've got to be careful if you're buying in round bales because you don't really know what you're getting and so I did some bales you might remember I did some bales in first cut because I had too much grass for the clamp let me just get in the cab because it's windy and you'll probably be windy on the mic. Oh, that's better. Right. So I did first cut silage and then I round bailed some silage for first cut and it was really good quality. That was first cut's always the best quality. Fresh spring grass, high in sugar, really good. Second cut, not so not so good, perhaps. Uh, but still okay. But this is second cut gone gone stalky really past its best now the thing is once i bailed this if i stick that in a stack of bales who's going to know what it is and you go along and you and you're looking to buy bales and you um you just go yeah they'll be far i'll have 30 round bales but you don't actually know what you're getting so it's quite important when you're buying round bales to, to ask someone what they are whether first or second cut you know because at least you can help yourself because once this is bailed up no one will know I'll know when I feed it. Um, 
what I might do is I might uh, put some when this bale I might put some paint dabs on the, those bales just so that I can identify these bales and then uh, when we're feeding them because they do come in at different when depending where you grab them on the stack sometimes you do feed them and you're not quite sure which one's which you soon forget um, I'll you know I'll be able to identify them if they've got a white dot on them so I might be able to divert those I don't know maybe for the heifers rather than to the cows uh, dry cows um, I think certainly when feeding these you might have to give a bit of supplementary feed because there's going to be not a lot of nutritional value in the grass however as I've learned from experience cows are pretty well eat most things and do you know what depending on how the winter goes you'd be glad of 30 bales no one would care whether they're a bit poor quality if you haven't got the grass if we have a late spring um, you never know and I'm, our maize crop isn't looking very heavy so I think we eat, although we've got plenty of grass we'll be feeding more grass because the maize will run out quicker I think there you go so right I'm gonna just finish off this um, that's the end of this video I might catch up with the tether or the um, baling I don't all the bales finished I'm not sure depends how I go but anyway I'm gonna crack on see you later I am an animal animal <laughs> crack on